Thanks, Michael, and good morning, all. What I wanted to talk today is about how we can actually benefit from technology today. And I suppose the reason for this presentation is born out of a little bit of frustration on my part with we hear every day and it's easy to find the resources and the articles that tell us about blockchain and AI and robotics and how transformational they'll be for our business. But it's very hard to find articles that tell us, well, what should we be doing today and how can we benefit? And the question I want to really ask everyone here and the takeaway is, is why not? Why aren't we doing something today? And why aren't we benefiting today? Because historically, you might have thought about a large scale impl implementation such as App or NetSuite. Um, but we don't need to anymore. And the solution for that lies in Apple and the iPhone. They've transformed technology and they've, they've effectively appified it. So now we can find an individual solution for an individual problem as opposed to having to look for something huge, expensive, and time consuming to implement. So if we all have problems in our businesses and we have cumbersome um, processes, why aren't we trying to find solutions out there? And even if we look at the, um, the sponsors for today, most of those sponsors solve individual problems. They don't solve full scale problems. So they can solve one thing that irritates us or is time consuming within our business. And that can be transformational when you start to add those things together. I found this when I was, when I was pulling my research, my, my, my deck together, and, and I find it's really interesting that Deloitte found, said that the roadmaps to the future are still being drawn. But they've always been drawn, and Brenton talked about it as well with automation over the, the last 20, 30, 40 decades. And the question really is, is why the hell aren't we doing it now when we can be, because the technology exists? So I want to look at five things. I want to go back to basics for a minute. I want to look back to look forward. I want to talk about why this really matters. Um, I want to be practical about how we can do this and that then the things that we really need to consider. So bear with me for a second as we just make sure we're all on the same page about the cloud and APIs. These are two super simple things that you know aren't um, rocket science for want of a better word and the cloud is super simple. It's a, it's just a remote server that adds better functionality, security, accessibility, and redundancy than you might otherwise have in a localized server in your own office. And APIs are the information highways that connect the cloud to whatever service you're providing or purchasing. So historically, we've come from a segregated position where finance sits alone and isolated within a business and isn't connected to what we might call the magic of the business and the marketing and the operation side. Um, and, and, and very uh, valid reasons for that with regards to information uh, accuracy and security. But that has comes with drawbacks where we're, we're perhaps slower, we're perhaps looking a bit more backwards, and we're not able to add the value that would be expected from the rest of the business. Um, and, and this is where the technology of today implemented correctly can allow us to add value across the business. There's a journey here, and that's really important to call out, and this is our journey in EML so far. Um, I think it's interesting the way Brendan said that um, Australian and New Zealand businesses tend to be a little bit ahead, and EML is an Aussie PLC. And we kind of pulled this together recently at a finance offsite to look at you know, where have we come and, and, and where do we want to get to. And, and there's two things that really are interesting for me on this slide is, in 2013, we started off being extremely reliant on Excel. And Excel is a super tool, but it's extremely manual. And we started to evolve in 2016 a little bit smarter. And in 2019, we're not here yet, but this is where we want to get to. And what's really interesting is, is Excel is in, in what we use it for is diminished. Um, but also, um, to use the word appified again, right, we've, we've actually brought in a whole pile of tools to solve individual problems, as opposed to just taking one big solution to solve everything. Um, and yes, it comes back with complexity and drawbacks, and, and we don't all have to head to here. We can certainly start with one place and slowly add on apps and, and technology to solve problems as we identify them and as we get better with the implementation and installation. So why does this really matter? Why do we care? It's really simple. It's coming one way or another. Um, and our staff expect it, our clients expect it, and um, someone said earlier that you know the clients are coming and, and demanding that zero be installed. So step up and think about this and keep asking the question internally and of yourself, why aren't we doing it today? Because we should be, and our staff and our clients expect us to do it. Also, when we actually implement this technology and, and, and implementing it correctly, which I'll touch on shortly, is, is extremely important. It allows us to see the wood for the trees. 
it allows us and our staff to step back and think about things. I'm sure we can all find someone in our office who spends too much time in the quagmire of month end and AP and AOR and bank recs, and they never really have the time to step back and think, why am I doing this? What value does it add? Where can I add value across the business? As opposed to just doing. And, and that's where the real value add of all of this technology comes from, is allowing your staff to add value. It's not the technology that adds value. And I think that's kind of a misnomer at times, is that people see this technology is amazing. If I just implement it, it'll work, and then all of a sudden we'll be a better company. It's not, that's not true. If you implement it, that's great, you have a tool and a resource, but it's allowing your people the freedom and the time to step back as a result of the time you freed from them to do that. That's where you get the real value add, um, and, and that's why it's super important. So I kind of touched on it just there, but really, if we implement these tools correctly, we can effectively automate the mundane, the, the bank recs, the APDA, or payroll forecasting, which are painful but necessary. So what we want to do is do those quicker, more efficient, and, and, and yes, accurately. Um, and by implementing tools to do that, we can. And then it frees your people. And the value add comes across customer engagement, pricing decisions, strategy, KPIs. That's where we get better as a business. And, and I think a lot of finance teams don't actually have the time each month to, to um, take the month end pack, look at it and say, really, what should we be focusing on next? And I know myself and in, in our finance team, we have that exact same problem. We close in five days and have a call on day six. And I would love more time to close in three days, let's say, and actually let my team, let the numbers sink in and sleep on them and then actually have a call with the CFO and the CEO and say, here's where we think we're going wrong or here's we need to have a conversation with sales. And all of these tools together can, can help drive us to add value in the business because that's what's expected of us as finance professionals. Additional benefits, right? Fairly, fairly self-explanatory and, 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 and fairly uh, common sense, right? Operating costs, efficiency, productivity, we can broaden the customer base because we might actually see an opportunity that might not be otherwise spotted. We can look at gross profit margins, customer concentration, that kind of thing, because we have time to do so. So how do we do this? If we look at a, a simple AP kind of flow, um, and I'm sure we can all think of, and, and, and please do think of, an extremely cumbersome and manually intensive process within your business. We all have a couple of them. A, a standard AP automation, or excuse me, a normal flow perhaps, is we get an email, we get a, a, a post in, we capture the data, we route the invoices, we approve it, we put it into the system, and we pay it, and then we file it away, and then if in a year's time we have to go dig it out, we have to go find it. It's, it's an awful, awful process, and most of us do that process. But the question is why can't it be this? Why can't it come in, be auto-routed to the approver, and then, and then paid in, in an AP queue? And the answer is it can. We just haven't actually thought about why we can't do it. And there's plenty of tools out there if you think about um, an auto-inbox, OCR to read the invoice. If there's a PO, it should auto-match to it. If there's a PO, we should know who the approver is, and therefore we should push that into their approval queue. It should be approved, and it should go into the AP queue to be paid. There's two manual steps in that, the approval and the payment. If we can do that across a couple of different processes within your business, you can transform the time, or you can transform your business, and you can also save your, your finance team a whole pile of time, which allows them to add the value that we talked about earlier. So how do we do this? And, and these are some of the tools. And when I saw the um, when I saw the sponsors, I should have got some brown envelopes from these guys and I put this in. Um, it, it's quite simple. There's a whole pile of tools and you've got to connect them. But you don't have to do them all at the same time and you can certainly build on them, right? If we think about the data access or data storage in, 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 in the cloud, you have Box, OneDrive, uh, Dropbox, you have Amazon Web Services. You have a whole host of these things. Um, and what they provide is obviously the security re redundancy version control. Um, and they also provide the the ability to link up to all these other services that we see here, um, and they're superb. The accounting packages who are all actually here, um, and, and Surf, Zero, Sage, are getting smarter. And they're born out of that need that, and that expectation from finance professionals that we were smarter, we're quicker, we're more efficient. And certainly with um, bank feeds and the open banking um, requirements coming this year, these packages are superb. Um, and what they also provide then is, is the ability to um, 
get smarter information out of them and, and quicker and, and actually provide KPIs as a result of that. Expense management, right, we have Expensify, Concur, Pekin, um, good products and, and, and they all link then into different things. So um, we had the Pekin product and full disclosure, it is, it is an EML product, but these products link in, they can digitally store the receipts, you remove paper, they can push it into the correct expense caption um, and they automate a, a really extremely painful process that we all face with regards to expenses and payment and, 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 and that kind of thing. Communication tools, we all hate our inbox. So why aren't we putting in something that removes that and sim simplifies that? If you think of Slack, which we've only recently installed ourselves, instead of someone joining a conversation when they're new to the business, Slack actually stores the entire thread of conversations. So that if I join the business today, I can see all the conversations from a year ago. And that's, that's a resource uh, tool and a knowledge box that otherwise we wouldn't have. And, and that's something we also all face is, you know, codifying our knowledge. You know, it's, it's tacit most of the time. It sits in people's heads and when they leave the business, well, crap, right? Whereas if we have these tools in place, it's there. And we can see the conversations, we can see the actions we took as a result of issues, and we can learn from those. And then a really cool one is the data visualization tools. But important to call out with these guys, it's, it's garbage in, garbage out. So be really cognizant of that and, and really understand what you want from these tools and, and, and who the users are and what they need to see. Um, but they, they can genuinely be superb. So if we're gonna do this, what do we need to think about and how do we do it correctly? Um, and to my mind, there's, there's five key things, right? And the elephant in the room with, with all of this is, uh, is GDPR and data security and storage. And um, I don't have the time to do that in this presentation but do think about it and I'm, I'm happy to talk about it afterwards if anyone would like. The two most important things for me on this slide are, are, are measuring, measuring twice and implementing it correctly. You know, I think where we fail mostly with techni technology implementation is around um, we just install it and leave it and we walk away from it. And if it's not adopted correctly within an organization, it fails. You really need 90, 100% adoption and understanding for something to succeed. And that's why if we just think back to the second slide around the iPhone, the, the amplification um, of technology is actually superb for us because most large scale implementations fail somewhere within the business because somebody hasn't taught them how to use it or they haven't engaged with the product or it doesn't fully meet their needs. If we can install piecemeal technology to solve a problem, well that's a very specific user, user base and it's a very specific problem that we're solving. So we should understand that and we should implement that correctly. And if we do so, the adoption goes up and that problem gets solved. So really spend the time to understand what it does and how it will be used and spend the money to implement it correctly. Don't do it flippantly. And then, oh, obviously then, right, understand the cost benefit analysis, you know, pick the cumbersome, the manually intensive processes to understand the value financially, but the value time-wise because that's where the real value is derived. You might see it in your P&L, but you'll certainly see it in your staff um, if they're freed up to add value across the business. And finally, once you've installed it, you can't really walk away from it, so think about the maintenance and whether that involves having a contractor, you know, review the, the product every six, 12 months, monthly basis if you so wish, because if the product, the updates break something, which can happen, or we just kind of leave it languish and it gets older and older and older, people won't use it and you lose the value that you realize in the first six to 12 months of that product. And if we do all of that and we implement it correctly and we pick the right technology to solve the right problem that we've identified, we might just get here. We might actually let our people step back and think about the business and consider what we're doing and, and where the value is and where the new business opportunities is. Because to my mind, that's what technology does is it frees our people. It doesn't just implement technology and that's great. It allows us as finance professionals to add value across the business so that ultimately hits the bottom line, which is what we all really want at the end of the day. And ultimately, it allows us to deliver on generally what we would all say is that people are our most valuable asset, so leverage them. Thank you very much. Happy to take any questions.